Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Um, I am the Debt-Free Dog Groomer and I am here to help dog groomers, or anyone for that matter, to live the lifestyle they want. You don't have to live paycheck to paycheck and I will show you how to reach your, your financial goals one video at a time. So today um, I'm talking about the famous topic, um, work smarter, not harder. Uh, that is definitely really important to me in your career. Um, you know, at first when you have a business or you start working somewhere, that's not your goal. Ideally, when you start, when you first start, you're just figuring everything out. Um, you're not really too worried about like your timing. You're just trying to learn everything. You're trying to get good at that specific job. So when we, when I started my business, that wasn't my goal first that wasn't my first goal so when i started my business i was just worried about getting the clients in didn't really matter to me how long i was working on the dogs as long as they looked good um plus when you first start you don't know where you're gonna put everything where everything is um stuff like that so the three main groups for me um, to working smarter and not harder is your hours, your services, and your clients. So I'm going to go further into detail on those three main um, topics or reasons, like those three main uh, things to focus on um, to working smarter and not harder. So with your hours, um, you're going to want to, most of you work more than full time. Um, if you don't, good for you. That's, that's a good goal. Um, working full time, you know, 40 hours is my goal or even a little bit less because I love, um, the flexibility, I know that grooming is a demanding job on your body and uh, your mind. So it's nice to work not like a crazy person, basically. So um, limit your hours and stick to them. So at first, when I was going into the salon, um, I didn't really have set... I, I had set hours for appointments, but I was there seven days a week, um, nonstop, pretty much. I didn't have a day off. Now, I wasn't good at setting my hours specifically for certain tasks. So you want to set your grooming hours and be comfortable with that. Stick to your guns on your grooming hours because, you know, if a client cannot fit your schedule, then that's probably not a client that's going to fit you as a groomer because you everybody bends the rules saying like oh I'll just do this one dog on my day off you can't do that to yourself because it's just a vicious cycle I mean I used to do the same thing when I would take dogs like you know it was like a special dog that I only did on my day off or whatever like a friend's dog or whatever, you want to limit your grooming hours to your set grooming hours and be comfortable with doing that. You know, if they really, if they want to come to you and they really love you as a groomer, um, they can make something work most of the time. And if they can't, then, you know, there's nothing wrong with um, you referring another groomer or them you know, going somewhere else on their own. Um, just don't feel guilty about like not bending your schedule because it's, it's, you're, it's really important to stick to it. And honestly, when I limited my hours, I made more money. Um, I know that sounds weird, but basically when I set my grooming hours and my office hours, when I stuck to that, I made more, I made my time more efficient. So kind of how what like what I would do is in the morning when my 
dogs were getting bathed and dried. Now, it's different now because I'm mobile. I'm still kind of figuring out the mobile schedule. But for a salon in the morning when my dogs were getting prepped, I would um, work on my paperwork. So what I could get done in like, basically that would be like 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. I was working on paperwork most of the time. And that was really efficient for me because I was basically waiting for my dogs to be prepped. So I, I mean, that was a perfect time to get all my office work done. And then I would return calls, um, anything that I needed to do besides grooming. In the end, I was grooming in the salon uh, before I did mobile at all, Tuesday through Saturday, nine to five. I, I stuck to that. And sometimes I even got done early. Great. You know, if, if I was working less than that, perfect. If not, you know, it wasn't a big deal. Tuesday through Saturday, nine to five. I really stuck to that unless, you know, there are cases where you don't realize like quite how long a dog's going to take you. And, and even then it's, it's probably not going to take that much longer than you're expecting. You know, we would get done at like 530 or six o'clock at the latest, the absolute latest. So my office hours, um, you know, were about five hours a week and that's per that worked perfect for me. So also focus what you're good at. Um, you want to advertise your niche no matter what that is. Like if you really love grooming Yorkies, then which I love I love grooming Yorkies. I know they're they're more of an anxious breed, but I, I absolutely love grooming Yorkies. I know they have like a tough coat to work with. I mean their hair sticks out everywhere. But I use a clipper vac and I just love working with their hair. But I make that known, you know, tell clients, like, you know, if you're grooming a Yorkie for them, tell them, oh, I really love grooming Yorkies. They're actually my specialty. You don't even have to be, you know, amazing at grooming Yorkies. Um, I think the client cares more about you caring for their dog in the right way. And if you really say, like, I love, love grooming Yorkies, then that really the word gets around and, um, I think that everybody has their, their thing and you know, that it doesn't have to necessarily be a specific breed. If you say that my, um, you know, your niche is D sheds, uh, that is, I mean, some people love to do D sheds and, and make that known. Like you don't necessarily have to advertise, um, you know, on your like business page, like your Facebook page or your, um, website. Uh, I would, if, if I were you, if you know that like you like doing something specific and you're good at it and you're efficient at it, 100% advertise for that. Um, you know, talk about it, post it everywhere, you know, make a Facebook post like, oh, um, you know, some people don't realize that short haired dogs need grooming just as much as long haired dogs. And, you know, eventually those type of dogs are going to come your way. Um, make it known to other groomers in the area. Um, you know, I really like doing D sheds or, you know, I really like doing Yorkies or I really like doing, um, curly coated breeds, you know, whatever that is, um, uh, make that known. Um, also set up how, how clients are contacting you. I would, um, basically have one or two ways where you prefer to be contacted by the client. So if you prefer text or if you prefer Facebook message, um, have that everywhere you can, like in your voicemail, um, say we only, 
respond, like we only respond to text messages and Facebook messages, have an automatic reply, um, pointing them in the direction you want to be contacted. So also, so your services, figure out what services are uh, worth your time. So like, I don't do, I don't do nail painting because I, it's for what I was charging. Yes, I can charge more, but for what I was charging, it was just a huge headache to me because like it wasn't drying or the dog was fussy and I was getting it everywhere. Nail painting is just absolutely not for me. So I don't do that. And it's just not like, there's nothing wrong with not offering some services that you would think that every groomer offers. Um, like uh, the controversial anal glands, like that is up to you and what you're allowed to do. Um, but uh, so like a service like Blueberry Facial, that is 100% worth my time uh, and money because the facial shampoo um, for how much you're using it's like it's not that exp it's not that expensive to you know charge five dollars or whatever in in mobile I automatically include that because I just wrap everything in one price but um, if you have add-ons like a blueberry facial is definitely um, a good thing to do because uh, you know it, it smells amazing the clients usually love it. Just give them a little spray afterwards. Perfect. So then um, hair dye, like I don't do hair dye because I'm not efficient with my speed whatsoever. So like I do every once in a while, I'll do something little like, you know, a dyed mohawk. Um, that is, I think the only Thing, the only hair dye that's actually worth my time because mohawk real easy just paint it on you know let it sit whatever however you do it but um that I will offer but anything else like there's no um you shouldn't feel bad about saying no if you feel uncomfortable with a service or if you just don't think it's worth your time um and you're not that great at it, don't offer it. I mean, like if if you wanna focus on literally just bath dogs, do that. If you wanna focus on just curly coated breeds, um, I don't think you could have a whole business just doing curly coated breeds, but um, that could be most of your business. Um, so, and then de-shedding, I had an, I had a de-shedding service at my salon where it was 15 to $20 extra and clients would 100% pay that. Like just about any time I asked a client, do you want a de-shed? They said, yes, I don't care how much it is. So that is definitely worth your time because we actually, we just used like Furminator shampoo and conditioner, extra dryer time, extra brushing. And that was a good way to, you know, my, I don't know what my dog is doing down there, but <laughs> um, that was a, that was 100% worth the time and money. But, um, and then also the clients, find the clients that fit your grooming needs. So if there's one client that, you know, you just don't feel like it, their requests, like if they want something that you don't, don't, don't like doing or like some requests that you're just, every time you see it, you're just like, oh, I, I really don't like doing that. Um, there's no, um, there's no reason why you can't just say like, look, I actually, um, this isn't really my specialty whatsoever. Um, but here's a groomer that really likes doing this or, you know, here's a better option for you. Uh, because I think that the more, um, specific you are in your grooming, I think the better, uh, because you really focus on stuff that you love doing and stuff that you can do efficiently. Um, so I would 
So keep your ideal clients and send clients that aren't the right fit for you somewhere else. Meaning like I, like I said before, if you're uncomfortable with doing something or you just don't feel like you're that good at it or, you know, you're every time you see it on the schedule, you're just like, oh, I, I don't feel comfortable doing this or it's just like, it's just a difficult dog that you have problems working with. Um, don't feel bad about suggesting, you know, other places that could handle that a lot better. Um, so, and then the clients that really fit your grooming, um, the client, you know, everybody has those, everybody has their favorite clients. Um, everybody has clients kind of like clients that really like the dog and the client just completely fit what you want and make, I don't, I don't necessarily bend over backwards for those people necessarily. Uh, but I will definitely, um, I will try to fit like, you know, if they have to cancel last minute and they, that they never do that. Um, it's just, you know, something happened, I'm completely flexible with them. So like, if, you know, the day before they're like, Oh, I'm so sorry, like, I need to move their appointment. I didn't expect this. Like, I'm 100% like, okay, I'll move you to wherever you want. If it's those clients that really are on a regular schedule, and it's your ideal client, I work with them. Um, also, um, if it's something that you don't feel comfortable with and it's a new client, be honest with them. And if you really don't think that it's a it's the right fit, let them know up front and just be honest. So like I don't groom Cocker Spaniels in my mobile just because of the drying time that just, it, I mean, you guys know, they just take so long to dry. It's just not I, I say up front, Cocker Spaniels fit so much better in a salon situation and here are salons I recommend. So that, and I know like when, if I'm hesitant about taking a Cocker Spaniel in my van and I decide, oh, well, you know, maybe, maybe for, for this dog, for this client, I know that later down the road, I'm going to regret it just because it's not a good, they're typically not a good fit for mobile. Um, they just, they take so long to dry. <laughs> so, um, I think I find it a lot better if you're just honest with like, honest with them with the reason, uh, up front that way. It's just, it's not like, I try not to, you know, if there's a client that they're in my area, but I don't want to do the dog for a specific reason. I'd rather not say like, oh, you're out of my area. Um, Cause what if they see me, you know, on that street? Like it, that's just, it's tough to deal with that kind of thing sometimes. But I think that, you know, if it's a request like, oh, I love my dog to be, uh, so long. It's like, I love my dog to be scissor trimmed, like as long as possible. Um, you know, it's not really ideal in mobile. And I'll just tell them that like, you know, that kind of coat is I, more ideal for a salon here. So I recommend, um, that way, you know, cause I know I'm not going to charge enough hourly for, doing a dog that I really truly love working on and that I prefer. So that wraps up today's video. Um, if you have any questions, um, you know, put it in the comments. I'm not sure what next week's video is going to be yet, but I upload every Wednesday. Um, and I try to post at 7 p.m. I had trouble with live, so I, I'm just going to keep recording and then posting every Wednesday at 7. So I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.